Hello there everyone, my name is Crazy Caleb, and today we're going to be taking a look at multi-tracking. This module is a little bit of a fun gimmick. Uh, what we have to do is we have to identify a series of different uh, animal tracks, which we're going to find. We're going to start at the bottom left, uh, always, and it will be, we're going to try and find uh, nine different boxes here. Uh, the top right will always be the status light, by the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the tracks in which the animals belong to, and try and open a series of different boxes um, based off of a series of invalid and valid times we can submit on. So, let's get right into this. So, what's going to happen is, is that there will be a series of different tracks that we get, which will be based off of these common animal tracks right here. Uh, these are indeed to scale, so horse is a rather quite large um, one here, uh, hedgehog is rather quite small, etc, etc. This stuff is to scale on the module, and this first one that we're looking at here is a dog. Now, describing this stuff is actually going to be rather quite difficult on the terms of voice. Um, it's not really, it's not really going to be that easy, but it is possible compared to some other ones. Duck is definitely easy to describe. Um, cow and horse are easy to describe. Um, however, cases like mouse, uh, for example, gerbil, uh, cat, and so on and so forth, might be a little bit trickier to describe. The smaller stuff tends to be a little, little bit more on the trickier side. Um, however, uh, with your team, I hope you will be able to figure out some description. So, but in this case, our first case is a dog. And what's going to be happening on this is along the way you will find you will find tracks of other animals which, when put together, could reveal the mystery animal because you have had an animal break into your neighboring uh, neighboring uh, troops controller, uh, excuse me, cooler, uh, and ate all the food. Unfortunately, so our goal is to track down that animal. So the seven tracks of all the other animals will form in the corner of two rectangles. So how exactly is this going to work? So it's always going to start at the bottom left, and we're going to then reveal the middle left, the top left. The top middle, the bottom middle, the bottom middle, uh, the, bo uh, the middle middle, the bottom middle, the bottom right, and then on the middle right submission, on the middle right box over here, when we break into that, that is essentially going to be where we're going to submit our answer, because of the fact that we're going to get seven different um, seven different animal tracks, and our goal is is to figure out uh, where the two rectangles are formed, and we're going to try and figure out which one is missing that position. So let's get right into it. So. Our goal is, is we need to start opening up each of these individual boxes to figure out, hey, what's missing. So let's take a look. Now, um, we start off with dog, and how exactly do we open these boxes? For each discovered track, do the following to find N. And what N is going to give us is it's going to give us an invalid time because of the fact that um, we're going to get a series of invalid times, which will be used later on. So um, we're going to take the row of the track uh, in the chart times the first digit of the serial number, which in this case uh, is number one through six here, because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and columns are one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six by six grid. So uh, we're gonna take the row of the track in the chart times the first digit of the serial number. Let's get our serial number, by the way, first. Uh, so let's do, it's a uh, Alpha Charlie zero, Lima X-ray six, okay? So uh, we actually don't even really need to worry about the row because of the fact that it is a zero. That is, in the, that is our first digit in the serial number. But in this case, it's going to be 0 times 2, which is going to give me a 0. Then, we're going to take the column of the track uh, in the chart times the, last digit, times the last digit of the serial number. So it is currently in column of 1, times this by the last digit of the serial number is going to be a 6. Then, uh, we're going to take the number of letters in the name of the animal, which is going to be a dog, which is going to be 3. And what we're essentially going to do is we're going to sum these three values together and modulo 10, which in this case is going to give me a total of 9. And uh, if no previous tracks share this N, stop here. Otherwise, simply add one until a unique N is achieved. So in this case, this is our first N, so we're simply going to say this is 9. So now, what exactly do we do with this 9? Uh, we're going to press the most the most recently found track, which in this case is the bottom left. It's the first one that we're looking at. And it's only going to be valid if the last digit of the timer does not match any of the N corresponding to, uh, to a currently uncovered box. So we're going to hit this when it is not 9, when the last digit is not a 9. So this should work right now. And just like that, the middle left box is going to open up, and a new track will be spawned here. They will always be unique animal tracks, and there should not ever be a case where you need to, um, where you need to essentially look at the same animal again. So, this one, taking a look here, uh, it has a little dot at the end of it, and a series of three different ones. Now, the possibility, there is a possibility of this being rotated, which in this case, this corresponds to a partridge, a partridge with a tree. So this is going to be a partridge. Um, it's got a little dot behind it. That's good to go. Now, 
when I say a rectangle, rectangles can be squares, but squares cannot be rectangles. So this is going to be corresponding to, uh, there is the potential chance that it could be just a, a, a normal square that you're looking at here, um, that you get with the corners of the animals, which I will get into later. So, uh, partridge, in this case, is going to be in row four, times this by zero. We're going to do this for each individual animal, by the way. This is essentially what we're going to be doing until we get to the middle right here. So, uh, in this case, the row of it is currently in row four, times this by zero, of course, is not going to give me anything. However, it is in column six, which in this case is going to be right down here. So let's pop out our handy digit calculator. So, uh, we have six times six, uh, so that's going to be that. And then we're going to add the number of characters in the name itself. So a, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus the nine. And now with this, we're going to modulo this by 10. So subtract 10 until it is lower than 10, or simply take the least significant digit, which in this case is going to give me a five. This is still unique. So we are simply going to ignore, uh, we're simply going to avoid five and nine. So we can press that six or eight and like so. And just like that, we have a new animal claw here. Now, this one sort of looks like a, uh, a normal claw, like a, almost like a wolf, except it has a little dot in it. That could be really helpful for us. Um, oh, it actually is a wolf. Okay, that actually works. So this is in row six, times this by zero, was not gonna give me anything. Uh, this is also in column six, um, which is going to be 36. And we're gonna add the amount of characters, which in this case is a four. Um, and that's gonna give me 40, modulo this by 10, is going to give us our, our new number of zero. So, zero is going to be another one that we avoid. It can be in the range of zero through nine. It will always be all, all individual numbers, uh, as it says here, wrapping around to zero to nine if necessary. Um, and we're going to hit this when it is not one of these numbers. So we can do eight. And just like that, the top middle of it. So it's always going to follow this pattern of uh, going up the left column, going right, going down the middle column, going right to the bottom right, up to the, up to the middle right. That is when we submit our answer. And then the status light will appear up in the top right once the module is done, hopefully. Now this one, this one's a little bit of a smaller one, but it has quite large claws, which in this case, as we take a look here, corresponds to the badger. So let's take a look. So badger is currently in the first row and the first column, which in this case is gonna be uh, adding zero because we're in the first row. Zero is the first row of the track multiplied by the first digit of the zero number, um, which is gonna be zero. We're gonna take the column, which in this case it is in column one, top left basically, which is gonna be adding six to this. So we're gonna do six plus the amount of characters that are present in the badger here. So six plus six, uh, which is the amount of characters, is gonna be 12, modulo this by 10 is gonna be two. So far, everything has been unique that, uh, for all the digits that we've received. That's pretty good. So now let's press this when it's not one of these four digits. So let's do three. Now this one is a little bit of a skinnier boy. Um, this one has four claws. That's gonna be helpful to, to determine the claw count as well. Um, and it is rather quite small. Uh, it, I wouldn't say it looks like a duck, but the middle parts are quite small itself. So uh, this is not a hedgehog because it has five claws. This is going to correspond to not also a frog. This is going to correspond to a squirrel. Yep, so right here. So now we don't care about the row number for right now because it's always going to be multiplied by zero. We're going to leave that alone. Uh, the, the column number is currently column four. So four times six is going to be 24. And then the uh, amount of characters that are in its name is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to be eight characters. So plus eight is going to give me a two, modulo this by 10. Now, we already happen to have a two in this case. So what exactly do we do from this point on? So as I said beforehand, if the, if no previous tracks share this N, which in this case, this happens to be a two, uh, we're going to uh, stop here. However, in this case, we're not going to stop here. We're going to add one until we get a unique N, which in this case, if we add one, we'll get a three. That is good to go. That is a unique N that we have not achieved. That makes this good to go. So now we don't want to hit any of these five digits. Let's see what we have next. So let's do... Uh, let's do two, let's do one. Okay, this is a rather quite large one, and I have my instincts that it is a bear, which it is indeed. So, already, taking a look, I can already have a hunch that it's going to be between, um, taking a look at what we have on the board here, we already have three individual corners forming here, which could potentially be a duck as this square here, or the rectangle. And then, taking a look down here, we have a partridge, wolf, and squirrel. My hunch is, is that it's going to be an otter. Now, we don't know exactly which one we're going to get, but we can pretty much deduce the options that it's going to be one of these two in the bottom right box. It should be either duck or otter, and whichever one we don't get, we have to finish that corner. 
But as you can see, stuff has already been forming here. That's good to go. That means we're doing something right. So now let's take a look back and let's calculate the next digit. And let's see what we have here. So bear is going to be in the in the first row. We don't care about the rows right now. Uh, hopefully we can get a different example with no zeros present in it at all. And now uh, the column is currently column two. Six times two is going to be two. Is uh, is going to be twelve. Uh, plus the uh, the four plus the four characters in its name B E A R plus four is going to give me a sixteen. Modulo this by ten is going to give me a six. That is unique. That is good to go. We don't need to add one to it, and we can do this next one at a one. We can do this next one at a one. And just like that, my prediction was correct. We get the duck this time around, which means that what we're going to do is we're going to try and open up the middle right box, and our goal is to submit otter. That's what we're going to do. So with duck. Uh, row 2, column 2, we can simply add 12 to this, um, because we all we simply care about is the column, which in this case 2 times 6 is going to be two, is going to be 12. Adding the 4 characters to it is going to be 16, minus this by 10 is going to be 6. 6 already has appeared in one of the ends from before, so we're going to add 1 to this, which will give me a... I added 1, 6 plus 1 is going to give me a 7, and 7 is good to go. So now... We're going to hit this when it's not one of these guys. We can do it on an 8. And just like that, we are given a random one in this case. So now what our goal is, is our goal is to navigate from the random point that we have in this middle right position. In this case, this is a crow, rather quite a thin boy. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to try and navigate to otter. That's our goal. Now, how exactly do we navigate through this thing? So as I said before, the middle right box will display a random track. This is always going to be that case. To submit the currently displayed track, we're going to press the box during any valid time as per the current uh, currently found tracks. So the way how we submit is essentially what we do is we submit one of these uh, one of these numbers that is not present. So in this case, we have um, uh, one, four, uh, and eight are the three that we're missing. Yes, that is good. That looks good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So it's going to be either one, four, eight is when we can submit. That's for submission. We'll write that down. Submit. And now. What we need to do is we can take a look at this. Otherwise, the box can be pressed during any during invalid times to change its display. And here we have two different conditions. Pressing the box when the last digit of the timer is greater than four will shift its position in the grid one to the right. And then pressing the box when the last digit of the timer is less than five will shift its position in the grid one below. So this is where things get a little bit interesting. So that's what we're going to be doing is we're essentially going to be trying to navigate to from from crow to our current position being otter because of the fact that remember we need to the seven tracks of the other animals will form the corners of two rectangles in the grids of possible tracks with one corner missing in this case this was our first rectangle over here with the badger the bear the duck and the uh, duck, dog and the duck and this is going to be our second rectangle with the partridge the squirrel and the wolf our missing corner is otter that's what we're going to try and do. So let's try and navigate down to Partridge, in this case first, so that we can get down to there. And we can shift right over, and it loops back around, by the way. Um, it loops back around, so we can shift to Otter. So let's try and press it four times, uh, or excuse me, three times down, which in this case, if we remember down, down corresponds to when the last digit of the timer is less than five. So what we want to do is we want to hit it when it's either a two, a three, or a zero. So let's do that. So let's hit it three times when it's either three or two. And just like that, we're at currently Partridge, as we can see right here, the exact same one as the middle left over here. So now we want to shift right one, two, three, four times to over to Otter. So let's do that. So it has to be when the last digit of the timer is greater than four. So we can do it either five, uh, six, seven, or nine. So we have to want to, we want to avoid eight. So let's do it on nine. Let's do, uh, let's do seven. Uh, and just like that, that should match up. Indeed, it does. So now, what we need to do is now that we have Otter in the correct position, uh, and this is the one that we're currently missing, uh, now that we have the middle right in the correct position, now what we want to do is we want to hit one of the valid times, which we were able to hit, not in this list, and this will be corresponding to our submit. So, for example, if we hit this on a 4, Just like that is a solved module. So let's go over one more example, and I hope that we actually can get a row that is not zero 
or a column that is not zero, because that makes the work a little bit easier. Well, I do want to be able to show off the actual work of that. But that's essentially what you're going to be doing throughout the entire module. Is you're going to take the row number, multiply it by the first digit, uh, take the column, multiply it by the last digit, add the number of letters to the serial number, add all those together, and then we're going to modulo 10, and we're going to get invalid times, which will be used later on, uh, to determine the uh, correct position of which we how, uh, how we're going to submit this module. So that's how this works. And I find it quite fun. It's actually a really fun module. However, on voice, it is very, very tricky to describe all of these individual symbols here. That's going to be the key here. It's very important that you also make sure that you actually get the symbols correct because every everything about that work is solely reliant on making sure that you get the correct symbol because characters are important as well. So let's take a look at this first example here. So we have, in this case, I believe it's, it almost looks like an honor, but it's a cat in this case. So cat is going to be our first one here. Let's get our first and last characters of the serial number. So in this case, we have, oh, this is lovely. We have a nine and an eight. This is going to be a little bit bigger. So nine and eight. That's going I shall receive. So now, <clears throat> with this knowledge, uh, and as I said, it's always going to start in the bottom left, middle left, top left, top middle, middle middle, bottom middle, bottom right, and then middle right is where we will submit. And then the status light, as you saw, popped up in the top right there. It will always be following that path. Just keep that in mind. So let's get right into it. So now, uh, with this knowledge, uh, cat is currently in the first row. Cat is currently in the first row. So we're going to do that multiply by the first digit. So one times nine. In this case, is going to give me a nine. This is a bit hard to place. Uh, then we're going to do the column. The column is going to be multiplied by the last digit of the serial number. So in this case, um, <coughs> four times uh, four times eight. And then we're going to add the uh, the nine we see we see from before. And now we're going to add the number of characters that we have. In this case, three. So there's three characters in cat. And this modulo ten is going to correspond to four. And this is going to be our first value of n. So now we want to simply avoid pressing this, pressing the box at that time, just like that. So now this one, this one looks like a, let's see where that one is. This one looks like a fox. Yes, it does. Okay. So this one's a fox and I can already potentially see a rectangle forming here with the cow or ferret. So that's going to be good. Um, now we're going to take a look at this. So this is going to be the row number. Row number in this case is going to be corresponding to two. 2 times 9 is going to be 18. And now we're going to multiply 5 times this by 8, because this is column 5. Uh, 5 times this by 8 is going to be 40, plus the uh, 18 that we received from before, and then plus the 3 that we're going to get from the characters, in this case being Fox. We can take the least significant digit, in this case is going to be a 1. 1 is unique, that's good to go. Let's space these out, guys, out a little bit. Uh, N equals, let's mark that there. And just like that, we simply need to avoid now 4 and 1. Let's do it on three. That, that's good to go. This one's a bit of an interesting one. It's currently upside down. Like I said, it's possible to be rotated. However, I was right. Ferret is going to be present, and we can already see that we're already forming one of the rectangles right here. This is really, really good for us. So, next up, uh, Ferret is currently in... Um, it's going to be in row two and column four. So, row two, in this case, is going to be nine times two, 18. Uh, column four is going to be eight times four. That's 32, plus the 18... Uh, and then plus the six in the characters, uh, because Ferret has F-E-R-R-E-T, -E 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 is going to be 56. Uh, taking the least of giving a digit, in this case, is a six. That's unique. That's good. So we're simply going to avoid 416. Now. So 418, that's good to go. This one, this might be the forming of the second uh, rectangle here, which in this case corresponds to Pig. This one's pretty straightforward. So Pig is currently in... Uh, the first column, but the fifth row, so 5 times 9, uh, and is that for the uh, row here, then the um, 8 times this by 1, which is simply just going to be adding 8. And now we're simply going to add a 3 to the pig, because the, the pig has 3 characters in it, so plus 3 is going to give me 56. However, when we take the least significant digit from this, 6, 6 is already present from beforehand, so we need to add 1 to this, giving us 7, and that's going to be our new end for the one. So we're going to avoid 4, 1, 6, and 7. Let's do that. Let's do 5. It's like that. The next one opens. This one we had beforehand. This was a wolf, which is in uh, row 6 and column 6. So we're going to be multiplying both 9 and 8 by 6, adding them both together. Uh, 9 times 6 is going to be a 54. 8 times 6 is going to be a 48, plus the 54 we got from beforehand. And wolf currently has 4 characters. Oops, that's my bad. Uh, wolf currently has 4 characters, plus the 4. We're going to take the least significant digit in this in, in this number here. Uh, it's going to be a 6. We've already had 6. 
Uh, so we're going to add 1 to that, being 7. We've already had 7, so we're going to add 8, just like that. Next up, uh, let's get the um, submission here right. Let's do 7, 6, 5. Just like that, that's good. Uh, this one is... Ooh, this actually might be interesting. Uh, this is a crow. Or no, this is a sparrow. This is a sparrow. This is important that you make sure that you differentiate on size as well, because I almost got tripped up with a crow here, as you can see here. Um, so, um, crow and sparrow look very similar. Same thing with the pigeon. Make sure you differentiate the points. And this is exactly what I mean by how the voice element can be very, very tricky on this um, on this module, especially. But as we can already see, we are currently forming the two rectangles that we need to. All we need to do is we need to determine the bottom right one to determine what our um, end point is going to be and uh, just navigate to it at that point. So, but in this case, we're taking a look at Sparrow. This is currently in row five, column six. So row five, five times nine, is gonna be 45. And then we have um, this, and then we have the, uh, the eight in this case. Uh, this is gonna be eight times six, eight times six, plus the 45 we received from beforehand. And then plus the amount of characters it has. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus the seven is gonna give me a zero. Zero is unique, that's good to go. Let's press the box uh, on a nine. Let's do it on a nine. And just like that, we have received the cow. The cow is exactly what we expected, big boy, and we're gonna be submitting the red deer when we get to it. So, um, calculating the cow though, so let's do this real quick. Um, cow is currently on row one, which is gonna be simply nine, and then uh, column five, which is gonna be eight times five, plus the nine, plus the three we get from the cow is gonna be a two. Two is unique, that's good to go. So now we simply need to avoid all of these guys here and our submissions is gonna be, take a look here, uh, it's gonna be one, two, it's gonna be three, five, and nine. Those are gonna be our three numbers that we're gonna do submission later on. So let's do five in this case. Open up our last box and we currently start on a partridge right here. So we start a partridge, we've done this one before. So now let's go back up to these controls. Uh, we need to move down, uh, we need to move one to the right and then two down in order to get us to Red Deer, which is our final destination. So let's do that. So let's do one to the right. So we need to do it when it's greater than four to move us one to the right. So for the invalid time, we can do, we can do a, we can do an eight, for example. Eight. We're only over at the Martin right now. And then when it's less than, when it's uh, less than five, we can move down twice. So let's do it on our first example, which can be a four. Let's do four twice. And just like that, the red deer matches up. So now let's submit on one of our three digits, three, five, and nine. So let's do five. And just like that is a solved module. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Remember to stay crazy, stay cool, and next time, keep your food locked up. See you guys later. Bye-bye.